Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe Hindi from AndroidAuthority.com, and the flavor of the year has been personal assistants. In this shootout, we're going to compare five of the most popular personal assistants, including Google Assistant, Bixby, Cortana, Alexa, and Siri. Okay, let's start with the very basics. All five of these personal assistants have a lot in common. You can access them with the press of a button. Most of them are built into their various operating systems. They all can fetch information and do web searches. They also all have base apps or dedicated home screen pages that allow additional info like weather news reminders and other stuff, as well as settings. The basic experience is very similar between all five personal assistants. That said, there are some things that you need to know. Each assistant works best with its individual ecosystem. Google Assistant works best with Google Apps, Chromecast, Google Home, and all of that jazz. Alexa works best with Fire Tablets, Amazon Streaming Services, Fire Sticks, and the Echo Devices. You get where I'm going with this. Choosing a personal assistant generally means that you're also choosing the apps and devices that they support as well. Thus, I can probably save you a bunch of time. If you're firmly ensconced in an ecosystem, your best bet is to just stick with the assistant that works best with that ecosystem. Siri doesn't work well with Gmail, Cortana doesn't play well with YouTube, Google Assistant works well with a variety of features, but you still get the best results with Google Play Music or Google Keep. That's just the way it is for right now. So let's get right to the questions. I'm going to make this really quick and simple because you don't have all day and neither do I. If at any point you see an assistant open a web search or simply not complete the command, they have failed that round. The assistants should be able to complete all of these commands with something other than a web search. We also tested each of these assistants on their home turf and that's why you'll see Cortana being tested on a laptop. Additionally, I'm not great at recording device audio. I apologize in advance if it sounds a little worse than usual. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's start with some basic, easy questions. These were the challenging questions like four years ago, and they definitely aren't anymore. There is no excuse for an assistant app to not be able to complete these. Okay, assistant, what's the weather right now? Looks like it's a cloudy day with a temperature of 61. Right now in Columbus, it's 61 and cloudy. Today, it'll be partly cloudy with a forecasted high of 73 and a low of 51. It's 61 degrees with cloudy skies. Today, you can look for partly sunny weather, with a high of 75 degrees and a low of 53 degrees. Okay, here's the weather for today. The forecast shows mostly sunny skies with a high of 71 and a low of 53. Okay, assistant, what was the score of the last Browns game? Cleveland Browns beat New York Giants 10-6. The Browns' most recent game was against the Giants. The score was 10 to 6 Browns. On Monday, the Browns beat the Giants 10 to 6. They'll play tomorrow at 7:30 p.m. away against the Buccaneers. The Browns narrowly defeated the Giants by a score of 10 to 6 last Monday. On Monday, the Browns squeaked by the Giants 10 to 6. Okay, assistant, tell me a joke. Where do spiders go on the internet? Their favorite website. Okay, here you go. Why do fish live in salt water? Because pepper water makes them sneeze. Why is tennis like coloring? You've got to keep it within the lines. I don't think you'd understand a joke in my language. They're not so funny, anyway. Why was the calendar nervous? Its days were numbered. Okay, assistant, when is the next solar eclipse? Let's take a look at what I found on the web. According to Earth Sky, you can see that after the August 21st, 2017 eclipse, the next total eclipse for North America will come on April 8th, 2024. The next solar eclipse will be the solar eclipse of February 15th, 2018, which will take place on Thursday, February 15th, 2018. It will happen February 15th, 2018. According to community members, on April 8th, 2024, a total solar eclipse will once again cross the country. It will come up from Mexico through Texas and on to New York and Maine, finally leaving land in Newfoundland. Okay, assistant, when is the next showing of Spider-Man Homecoming? Here is what I found on the web. The next few showings of Spider-Man Homecoming at Marcus Crosswood Cinema are at 10 a.m., 1.05 p.m., and 4.10 p.m. It's also showing at Rave Cinemas Polaris 18 plus Extreme in AMC East and Town Center 30 with Dine-In Theaters and IMAX. 
Here are a few theaters playing Spider-Man Homecoming near Columbus today. I found Spider-Man Homecoming a bit far from you. All five assistants performed very well. You will almost always find what you are looking for. Bixby appeared to struggle with direct commands unless you feed it the proper context. However, if a question doesn't work on Bixby, you can actually order it to open Google search and perform the exact same search there, thus piggybacking on Google's excellent responses. It's a cheap workaround, but it does work. We also got two different answers for the Eclipse question, but technically neither of them are wrong. The next one in the US is in 2024, while the next one in the entire world is in 2018. This is a wash because 2024 answers were correct in the context that I live in the United States and the assistants assumed that's the one I wanted to know. However, the 2018 date is actually the factually accurate answer. You can always specify more to get the most accurate answers. These commands are all simple tasks that you shouldn't have any trouble completing. Generally speaking, these are native commands that require either no third-party apps to complete or very obvious, nearly ubiquitous third-party apps that they all should have support for. Okay, Assistant, set a reminder to pick up milk from the store. All right, I've saved the reminder for you. When do you want to be reminded? Tomorrow at noon. Okay, do you want to save this? Yes. Okay. Reminder saved. Reminders are not currently supported on this device. Okay, I'll remind you. Got it. Okay, Assistant, play Pink Floyd's Time on YouTube. Here you go. Here's what I found. Here are some videos of time by Pink Floyd I found on the web. Sorry, I can't play music on YouTube. Okay, Assistant, open up the web browser. Silk. Sure thing, opening Google Chrome. Okay, Assistant, what's on my calendar? Sure thing, here's your calendar. Here are the events you requested. First up, you have a calendar entry on August 30th at 12 p.m. The title is Payday. Here are the next four events on Wednesday. August 30th, at 12 p.m. there's payday, on Monday, September 4th, there's Labor Day which lasts all day, on Wednesday, September 6th, at 12 p.m. there's payment removed from bank today, and on Wednesday, September 20th, there's mom's birthday which lasts all day. Okay, I found at least 25 appointments. Sure, I can help you find something on the calendar. Here's your schedule for today. Okay, Assistant, show me directions from Cleveland, Ohio to Las Vegas, Nevada. All right, it looks like the distance is 2,074 miles and your trip will take around one day, six hours by car. You can say start to begin the navigation. All right, the best way to get from Cleveland to Las Vegas by car is via I-80 West and will take about one day and six hours in light traffic. The fastest route to Las Vegas takes about 31 hours 48 minutes via I-70 and I-15. Getting directions from Cleveland to Las Vegas. Getting you directions to Las Vegas, Nevada. 
Overall, none of the assistants did overly bad. Alexis saw some struggles, including a lack of support for YouTube, which is the world's most popular video streaming service. Alexa does have YouTube support on devices like Echo, though. Other than that, all five devices performed admirably. YouTube support is surprisingly not great. Bixby and Google Assistant had no troubles, but the other three did, and I can't really explain why. Everybody uses YouTube, and not having support is just a little bit silly. Bixby, Google Assistant, and Siri do get some extra credit for being able to complete multiple tasks at once. They were able to do things like open web browsers to a specific web address, whereas the other two could not. The only assistant that didn't struggle in at least one category to some extent was Google Assistant. Our final set of questions represent hard mode. These are complex tasks that almost certainly require third-party integration of some type. This is the bleeding edge of what these assistants can accomplish, and this is also the functionality that's going to expand the most over the next couple of years. Okay, assistant, turn my lights on. Sure, turning the bookshelf on. Okay. Okay, the bookshelf is on. Um, I'm sorry for the quality of the audio. My setup is upstairs, filming the result of this, assuming it works. So this is an Xbox One. There you go, see? Xbox, there's my gamer tag and all that. So I'm relatively certain I can make Philips Hue lights turn on using Cortana on the Xbox One. So here we go. Hey, Cortana. Turn on lights. Okay, there are two small corrections here. Bixby does actually work with Philips Hue lights. However, you have to order this $50 Samsung SmartThings hub in order to do so. It's simply not worth it if you have only a couple of smart home things, and it kind of sucks that Samsung puts something like this behind a paywall. Additionally, Cortana does not have native support for Philips Hue. I used a third-party application called Hutro, which just so happened to work on both the Xbox One and Windows 10. Okay, assistant, track my next run. All right, we can manually enter the data here for running. Starting running. Please visit Amazon to track or manage your orders. I'll need to access your intervals data to do that. It okay, I started your work. Work. Okay, assistant, call me an Uber. Let's pick a destination. Let's check the details and request for a ride. Uber isn't supported on this device. There is an Uber X seven minutes away from your Alexa address. Should I order it? No, thank you. Have a nice day. What type of ride do you want? UberX. Uber can get you an UberX in seven minutes. Do you want to request it? No, thank you. Okay, I won't request it. Okay, assistant, order me a pizza. Here is what I found on the web. If you have more questions, you can go to Q&A by saying open Q&A. I found a few places within 8.9 miles. Do you like to place your easy order, reorder your most recent order, or start a new order? Start a new order. Great. Let's get started. Is this order for delivery or carry out? Carry out. Thanks. You can tell me what you'd like to order, or I can tell you about our menu. What would you like? One large pepperoni pizza. What type of crust do you want? You can choose hand tossed, crunchy thin crust or Brooklyn style. Brooklyn style. Your order contains one pizza. The total is $14.49. Would you like to review your order details or are you ready to check out? Check out. By placing this order, you agree to our terms of use available on dominoes.com. Your order should be ready for pickup in about 13 to 18 minutes. Do you want me to place the order? 
No, thank you. You're welcome. Please tell me if there is anything else I can help you with. I found 15 pizzeria restaurants. Tap the one you're looking for. Okay, assistant, download an app for me. All right, all right, I'm downloading it. Opening Play Store. Here's what I found. Okay, searching for Wonderlist on the App Store. This one is tough because a lot of these require complicated setups or have other limitations. For instance, Siri can order a pizza, but only in certain parts of the world. Google Assistant can hail an Uber and order pizza, but only on Google Home. We wanted to show that these difficult tasks could be done, but also that this is the bleeding edge and you won't always have access to these features. Functionality is generally unstable or incomplete, but promising on all five assistants to some extent. Cortana can turn on Philips Hue lights on Xbox One even if I had to cut out the eight failed attempts due to instability. It's a real pain that Siri and Google Assistant could have done better if their feature rollout were more consistent in respect to region and device. Overall, Alexa performed the best in this category, failing in only one question, and it excelled despite being used on a cheap, underpowered POS tablet. All right, folks, you've hung in there this long. It's time to decide a winner and get on with our day. Google Assistant is exceptional at context. One of the drawbacks of most other personal assistant apps is that you have to get the command just right in order to complete the task. Google Assistant is very good at figuring out what you need, even if you ask it to do the same thing in two entirely different ways. However, we are vastly disappointed that Google Home gets all of the fun features, like casting video, ordering pizza, hailing Uber, and other stuff, while their devices don't. It's the best all-around pick even if we have to wait for those awesome features to be available on our phones. Amazon Alexa is probably the most customizable assistant here. It doesn't do much out of the box, but you can install these things called skills that increase functionality dramatically. I had to install several of these skills over the course of the making of this video, and most of them worked really well. Additionally, Alexa excels at gathering information through conversation in order to complete a task like ordering a pizza. When it comes to pure functionality, Alexa can do more than all of the other personal assistants, and Alexa-enabled devices work exceptionally well with one another. It just sucks that so few devices have it and that Amazon's Android experience is vastly inferior to Google's Android experience. But Alexa did bring me pizza and none of the other ones did, so kudos to Alexa. Siri did surprisingly well during every round of this test. Apple has been doing well with keeping Siri competitive with everybody else and Siri feels like a solid option. It also has exceptional backwards compatibility. I performed this test on a first generation iPad Air and I know it did just as well as the latest iPhone would have done. Considering that the Pixel XL on Android Oreo doesn't even do as well as Google's home device, I gotta give Apple credit for delivering consistency between older and newer devices. Siri may not be the best choice, but it is a safe choice, especially if you're stuck on an older Apple device that still gets consistently updated. You're not going to be disappointed unless you need something it specifically can't do. Cortana's biggest strength is being available freaking everywhere like Starbucks or political dissonance. iOS, Android, Windows 10, and Xbox One means that it's available on more devices than every other personal assistant, and it's not a close measurement. You can't get any other personal assistant application on your phone, your computer, and your gaming system at the same time. It's accessible to third-party developers, although that potential is almost wholly untapped. It's quickly falling behind when it comes to third-party integration and more advanced tasks. Cortana has more potential than any assistant here, however, Microsoft really needs to step up their game a lot because their assistant is getting wrecked right now. And that brings us to the wild card with Bixby. Bixby did a surprisingly good job during testing, and where it excels the most is feeling like an actual personal assistant. When it performs tasks, it has the ability to emulate screen taps like an actual freaking person, and that lets it interact with on-screen elements better than any other assistant. It's unrivaled for boring, mundane tasks like rotating images in your gallery, downloading apps, cleaning out your browser history, and a lot more. It's really too bad that you can only have this on a few devices, and that its home automation features features are stuck behind a $50 proprietary Samsung hub. It still needs a lot of work though, especially in its tertiary features such as Bixby Vision. It's better than Cortana and at least as good as Siri. 
Of course, we'd love to hear what you think as well. Drop a comment and let us know which one you use and why. And that about does it for this one, folks. Don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority and ring the bell to get the latest Android Authority videos as soon as they're released. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful day.